Hello, I'm Jackie. Welcome to another one of my reviews. Today I'm gonna review the demise of Dr. Frankenstein. Um, this is a first for me. This is a game that is not out yet. It will be kickstarted in December, I think. Um, but this is not a preview, or at least not in the sense that I will take into account possible future developments. Um, my review will be strictly about how the game is right now in terms of component rules and um, gameplay. So the team is obviously the scientist trying to create Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> the scientist Dr. Frankenstein trying to create this creature, uh, the Frankenstein monster, or a lot of them, as you will see. Uh, and you do this by selecting actions from a pool. So let's delve into the mechanic of the game, and then I come back and give an overall uh, review of it. In the demise of Dr. Frankenstein, you are a mad scientist trying to build the creature or the monster, and or to build a lot of those before the villagers come and storm your lab. And you will do this over and over, uh, basically. As many times as there are players, the villagers will storm the labs every time you get points for the horror they witness, and then you start over with some um, things that stay. Basically, during the game, you will be taking action from a pool of uh, available ones that are determined by rolling dice before every, every choice. Um, so, in this case, for example, there will be a lot of ones and twos only one, three, and two, six, that means that only one person will be able to take this, this action while two people could take this one. Uh, the action do various things. One allows you to move Igor, which controls which part of the lab is playable. Um, another one gives you body parts from the Undertaker. There is a random mechanism to determine which ones you're getting. and um, Or you can get coins. You can place cubes in the clinician that both give you points and allow you to build a monster for uh, less parts. Or you can draw cards by paying coins. Um, there is a face-up display or you can draw from the top of the deck. You can get a max two for each action. Or the curator. The curator is basically wild action. This is the curator board. You can do basically everything that you can do somewhere else, but more more efficiently. The two problems are first, you need a six, not all the times there will be six available when it's your time to pick a die. And second, when you take an action, you place a cube there. This prevents other people from taking the same action, so the creator becomes less and less interesting while the stage progresses. And you are consuming one cube to keep it there, and you will need your cubes because every time you build a monster, which is the aim of the game, you build it here in the first available spot, so you want it to gain points, and the clinician spots as well require points. There is one way to build a monster without going to the clinician, but it's more expensive, both in terms of coins and body parts. But on the good side is you don't need to complete certain requirements in the clinician space. Every time someone builds a monster or um, visits the Undertaker, at the end of the turn the villager will move. When the villager reaches four, um, the people from the village storm all of our labs. And you will score points depending on how many monsters you have and where they are placed on this track, um, and how many cubes and when they are, where they are placed in the clinician. So you want to build your monster as late as possible because they are worth more points, but you seriously risk not having the time and thus missing out on those points. And um, when the villagers storm the lab, almost everything is gone. All your cubes in the clinician space are gone, all the cubes on the curator are gone, return to the supply. Your monsters are discarded, and if you have body parts or coins in excess of three, you have to discard them. So you cannot just stockpile and hope to uh, do everything at the end of the game. You have to uh, follow the flow and try to stay afloat. You repeat this as many times as there are players, and at the end, whoever has the most points wins. One last note on the cards. The cards provide a much needed variety for the game. There are two kinds of cards. Uh, one are monsters, 
uh, you have you basically set collect them there is only one set of the monsters they are all unique but they all work the same there is a little chart at the bottom of each the most monsters you have the most points you score and you score these at the end of each um, villager raid so these stay with you you can keep them and score a lot of points throughout the game if you have no more than four you have to pay coins but that's a uh, detail you will find out if you go into the rules in detail the other kind of cards that you can get are unique advantage cards. They make your actions more efficiently, more efficient. This, for example, says gain one officer card, basically a card, when creating a monster. Or there are others that make your getting money action more efficient, or getting body parts action, or moving Igor. Everything um, can be improved to cards. So you try to build an engine on cards, but, um, build a set of monsters, but at the same time you keep getting body parts, getting coins to do stuff around and not be surprised when the villagers come. When at the end of the game you add up all the points and whoever has the most is uh, the winner, is the best worst scientist. This is the game, this is the demise of Dr. Frankenstein. As you see, it's not a super deep, complex game. It has very straightforward rules. You roll the dice, take few actions, you have uh, not that many choices, and the goals are quite uh, strict. Either place cubes in the clinicians' uh, spots, get creature cards, construct monsters. That's all. And the game, in my opinion, suffers a little bit from that. The cards are um, give you a lot of different things that you can do, but they all work around the same very mechanism. So the game is a little bit too simple for my taste. This, um, however, makes it extremely easy, easy to teach. Um, you can teach it in 15 minutes and be done playing in an hour. And this is where the mm, very nice aspect of the game resides. I think it's an original mechanism, I know it has been used a similar mechanism in Ispaham, although it's not the same. Another new game coming out, El Ganja, uh, seems to have a similar mechanism. But this variable pool of actions that you can choose from, every turn that changes very fast because your turn is not that long, is interesting. So you can plan a little bit, but not too much, because you will never know exactly what will be there, and you don't know exactly what other people will be taking. And the creator spaces that get filled and they cut off your, your and everyone else's actions uh, turn after turn is an interesting, different take. Um, the components are good. The cards are surprisingly good. Uh, for um, a game without a big producer um, uh, behind it. Um, the little mm, tokens, the the pawns are very nice. I really appreciate the Iger one, but that's up to taste. Um, color scheme is simple but functional. The art on both the cards and the two boards is very good. Um, only two negatives. The rules are not really well, well written, you can understand them, you can figure out how to play. I think they could have been uh, written better. Um, as one especially little annoying thing is whenever they mention the entirety of the monster with one head, one torso, two legs and two arms, they figured out those are five parts while I count head, torso, two legs, two arms, that's six in my book. But that's repeated throughout the rules, but it's a little thing, I know, but a little annoying. Um, the other thing that I wasn't super thrilled with, and if it was a longer, more involved game, that would be a deal breaker for me. Some of the cards uh, looked unbalanced. Um, in all the games they played, I played four of those. Um, whoever got certain cards, the other people were really annoyed with them having those. Um, because basically some of those directly give you big point advantages while others make it cheaper for you to get points but not enough to offset the direct uh, points bonus of others. To be fair, cards are not randomly drawn. Uh, you can choose from the display, so if you see cards that you really think they're good, get the money and get the cards. That's how it works. Overall, the game is pleasant to play. 
Um, and if you like the team, the team is very different. <laughs> you are building Frankenstein. You're not chasing the monster. You're not uh, an evil scientist trying to um, dominate the world. You are just building your monster and trying to be left alone from the villagers. So if this intrigues you, um, there is this very nice little new mechanism. It's not the biggest, deepest game of all. It plays, it says, an hour to an hour and a half. I would say it's around an hour. And um, it plays well with two and well with four. So if you like this, if you like everything that you have heard, please head out to Kickstarter in December. I'm sure that Mark Henny will be happy with your support and I think you would be happy with your game. Um, this is all. If you want to check out other reviews, please check out my review channel on YouTube. And until next time, I'm Jackie and this was The Demise of Dr. Frankenstein. Thank you for watching.